Hello. I was just recently listening to a presentation by Dennis Prager, who was one of the leading conservative thought leaders in America and probably in the world, who leads the Prager University and he has a radio show and a quarter of a million people listen to him. And the subject of his presentation was that the left ideology, the left political orientation is a threat to Western civilization. And not as a byproduct of the ideology. No, 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 no. It says it's so much, much more. It says it's an intention of the left political orientation ideology to destroy Western civilization. I decided to react to it, and it is my thought. Left is growing in size, and Prager says that the left ideology is a religion and it's the fastest growing religion, faster than the Muslim religion, faster than the Christian religion, and for sure faster than the Jewish religion. And it's taking over the world. It's giving some examples of this intentional ideology that is destructive in its goal. That the Guggenheim has a exhibit. I don't know when it was, but there was an exhibit with a golden toilet and people pay to defecate and urinate into that golden toilet. And the title of the show is America. And the message he got out of it is those East that leftist oriented artists say, come and defecate on America, urinate on America. That's why he says it's their intention to destroy Western civilization, which I assume he identifies as rightist orientation. And they're opposed to the rightist orientation that was driving America all this time. And what is that rightist orientation? Capitalism. And the leftist orientation is socialism. And the intention of socialism is to destroy capitalist systems. Here is what's going on in my judgment. And I've been talking about it a lot in my videos and in my blogs, I'm going to repeat and summarize it so not to overdo it with my repetitiousness. We started as a civilization, as humanity, as a nomadic society. And the strongest hunter was a leader. And then we were an agricultural society, and the one with the most sheep, cows, and land was a leader. And that orientation permeated the colonialist era. The more land, the more mines, the more resources you have, the stronger you are. Then came the industrial society, and the brain came into play. Now you had to plan and organize the long-term commitments, business models. And it was an overlap between power, muscle, and brain. Now we live in a post-industrial society, the information society, power, resources, physical resources, mines are less important. They're declining in importance. And what's growing in importance? The brain. And the biggest successful companies measured by their value in the stock market are the one that has a lot of brain. Uber has no one car. They have a computer. 
and information. Airbnb, the biggest, largest hotel in the world, has not one hotel. They have a computer, data. What is Amazon collecting? Data. What is Google collecting? Data. Facebook, data. Brain, capability to get data and manipulate and manage and analyze the data and manage the data. Data society. But that is also on its way out. It went from power muscles to brain on its way out. What is a post-information society going to be like? And I believe we are at the intersection. If we continue, why is it, by the way, on its way out? Because of artificial intelligence and quantum computers. The muscles are being rep replaced by robotics, robots, and the brain with chips and quantum computers and artificial intelligence. The futurists tell us that soon we will have a chip to put into the brain and there will be normal Alzheimer. You'll be connected to the, to the cloud. You not even need to talk. The chips will communicate messages to another chip. They even say that if we live 20 more years, we will be able to live forever because every part of our body can be re-engineered artificially. You have an artificial heart, an artificial kidney, and artificial veins, and Everything can be replaced. And then the question is, what is the human being then all about? If we continue the road of muscle and brain, just muscle and brain, the future is going to be one big Nazi Germany. There were very educated people in Germany. They were very powerful. They invented the nuclear bomb. We just stole it from them. No heart. No heart. The other road is that we move from muscle and brain to the heart. To the caring. And caring, heart, consciousness cannot be replaced. There is no artificial intelligence that can do that. There is no methodology, no application that can make a robot have a heart. If I compare left with the right, the left is considered to be the one with a bleeding heart. They care for the immigrants. They care for the Afro-Americans. They care for the whoever is suffering. That's why it's called socialism. And they consider the right, which is all for economic growth and more economic growth and more success and more materialism, the enemy that has to be destroyed. And the right is fighting for survival. They were the past. They were the past. What the answer? If we have only socialism, look what happened to countries that were socialistic and they moved out of socialism. They're more capitalistic than the capitalist countries because it was suffering galore. As Churchill said, capitalism is an unequal distribution of wealth. And socialism is an equal distribution of poverty. Don't want that. So what do we want? If we go the right way, the have have more and more, and those that don't have have less and less, and this juxtaposition is going to explode. It cannot be sustainable. If we go to the right to the left, 
economic growth is going to suffer. Entrepreneurs are going to disappear. Thus, they're going to share poverty. What to do? It's neither. It's together. As a client of mine in Mexico calls it, prosperidad incluyente in Spanish, which means inclusive prosperity. It is capitalism with the heart. You compete in the marketplace, that's capitalism. But you're socialistic inside the company. You're a family in the company. We're a family as a country. While we are competing for economic success. They're not incompatible forces. They need to be integrated. Capitalism with the heart. It's a left and the right together. We need to develop that system. By the way, I wrote that book 40 years ago called Self-Management, New Dimensions to Democracy. We need a third way. It's not left, it's not right. It is together. Thank you very much.